Senator Tom Cotton had an op-ed recently, you might have seen going around. Tom Cotton, send in the troops in the New York Times. I read that it was on the 31st anniversary of Tiananmen Square. I could be wrong about that, but it seems appropriate. And that op-ed has generated a lot of controversy, reactions from people working at the New York Times, particularly when you understand who Tom Cotton is and what he has said about these protests already. Tom Cotton had previously tweeted that whatever it takes to restore order should be done, no quarter for insurrection anarchists, rioters, and looters. Now, of course, technically no quarter means that we will not be taking prisoners. We will be killing people instead of taking them prisoner. He's a soldier, so one would think he'd know that. He tried to pretend afterward that that's not what he meant, but that is what that means. And you would expect that either a soldier or a senator or someone who is both would be a little bit more careful with their language. But I personally think that he was being careful with his language. I think he knows that his base loves that sort of talk. And so the same- They do, but I don't know that everybody understands that. I think a lot of people think it means no space. I will give no space to these people, but- and it does literally mean what you said, and he should have used better words than that because he knows even if other people don't. Yeah, and so you have Tom Cotton saying that. Um, I, I don't know if that's better or worse than Matt Gates saying that now uh, Antifa should be hunted down the way we hunt down Al-Qaeda. Take your pick, but neither of them have suffered any consequences. You can just well, imply that protesters should be murdered in the streets and it's okay. Should we well, be Gates using got drones? a warning on his tweet. He got a warning on his tweet. Is that That's a true. Oh, yeah. that's true. That's enough. We don't need anything more. And then he wore that as a badge of honor. His first, I would guess. But anyway, uh, Tom Cotton had <laughs> uh, that op-ed where he calls for uh, soldiers to be dispatched uh, across America to put down uh, these sorts of things. He has a comment in there, by the way, about the fact that America is not blind to injustice but yada, yada, yada. What I noticed was in these tweets and in that op-ed, although we're not blind in justice, he gave no acknowledgement of any of the, the virtue or value of any of these protests or the rage that's driving them. He acknowledged no need to reform the police that I saw. He had no uh, legislation that he plans to put forward to make sure that these sorts of killings, like the killing of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and a number of others, Ahmaud Arbery, there's developments on that story today, uh, need to be changed. All, all he had... The only suggestion he had was to deploy soldiers uh, to put down uh, the protests. And a lot of people had a problem with that. We're going to have some of that in a second. But, Michael, what do you think about all this? You know, it's it's tough. Uh, I'm um, I'm not reflexively opposed to them printing this, but I've learned a little bit over the past day of of, of reading what other people's reactions are to it. Um, I you know the op ed is controlled by the op ed editorial board. That's their job. It's not. It's divorced from the paper to some degree. But too many times, people who already have a platform, you have to expect they get nearly a thousand submissions every day to be on the op ed page, and they give them too often to do, people. Is, is that a guess? Do they really get a thousand a day? I, I would imagine they get between 500 and a thousand every wow. day. I don't know that. And that's something that I, you know, that they could probably be gotten from them, but they get hundreds. Certainly. I know that um, because I know somebody worked at the times when I was trying to get something in myself once. And they said, you don't have a shot. And this was, I was in like just after college. And, mm -hmm. um, but, but the, the, and that, it, that was then. So I, I, I would imagine they get very many. The point though, is that they give them too often to people who already have a platform. Tom mm -hmm. Cotton has, has one in the Senate every day and you kind of know his position. But on the First Amendment score, I think that it's important, you know, to not pick and choose. At, at the same time, I think there are limits. I, I think that we all have this in, instinctive knowledge that fascism, as it's sort of laid out here without saying that word, is wrong. Uh, and what does the time gain? When time, what are those, the times gained by that? Also, Tom Cotton is a senator who is up and coming. He has uh, he is presidential fodder when you ask Republicans about him. He also has the president's ear. And I think it's important to know what's going on, what's coming out of the mouth who ha uh, th that has the president's ear. So I'm a little torn. I, I don't think the Times should have run it, but I don't. I also see what they're doing and why they did and what would have happened had they not run it. Had Tom Cotton, which doesn't matter to me, but it does matter to the Times, had Tom Cotton said, I had this op-ed that the Times refused to run, here it is, and this is why the Times is bad, and this is why the media is bad. I yeah, sort of see they were in a tight spot, too. I, I mean, get what you're saying. I have a feeling Tom Cotton will be saying that anyway. I don't think that... He already has, like you said, John. He's been saying it, right? Yeah. This is nothing new. So I, I, I hear what you're saying. Well, and... Uh, but 
and, it's and, a prevailing and, sentiment, though. And, and there are people on that side of the argument mm-hmm. that agree completely with Tom Cotton. Is it important to hear that? Uh, yeah, I get maybe. what you're saying. Yeah. In terms of the like trying to not be seen as biased, um, it, it is a pointless war to engage in because the right doesn't care. They're not expressing right. an honest opinion that these sources are biased against them. They're gaming the refs. That's all it is. And so you're That's never going point. to appease them. Um, That's a good and, point. Yeah. And in terms of what would, I mean, I know he would complain if it hadn't been published, but it isn't like senators don't get op-eds published all the time. It was it Schatz, I think, who he said, I submitted one on climate change, one on Medicare. They didn't print either of those. Right. Um, he's a senator. Aren't we obligated to hear what he has to say? That's what a lot of people had said. And But they didn't publish them because, as you point out, there are many possible submissions. They could have run an op-ed about the need to defund the police. Uh, maybe they'll do that, especially now after this controversy. But but they ran this. And, where and he's- I also, I, I think also just to, just to finish your thought there is is that we, you have to listen to how it was who was receiving it poorly, which I didn't do initially when I said, oh, they've got to print it. It's free press and yada yada. Uh, black America feels like it endangers them. And I think the Times um, is it has to listen to that and has to respect that. And that's maybe something they would do next time because of the outcry and because of what a sensitive time this is to, to print that. Maybe do it in three months. Looking back, I would have used, uh, the, Tom Cotton would have used military strength. I think it's not just easy to do this, but I, I've learned a lot from the reactions of, of black America on this, that it endangers them. And I don't think that's the Times role at all. Exactly. Yeah, they they rightfully fear that if uh, there are soldiers on the streets of perhaps New York specifically, um, we see what what's happening, that the, the violence is extreme, that it is disproportionate, that it is uh, distributed unequally based on the race of individuals. I mean, you've probably seen multiple videos of there were store owners, black store owners who called the cops to help them with looters. And the store owners got arrested. In this particular case, of big enough, they weren't beaten at least, but they were arrested. And so a number of um, employees of the Times are, are saying that. Here you have, I'll probably get in trouble for this, but to not say something would be immoral. As a black woman, as a journalist, as an American, I am deeply ashamed that we ran with this. Running this puts black New York Times writers, editors, and other staff in danger. A number of employees had that same basic message. And the editorial page editor for New York Times responded with a thread. One of the tweets in that thread was, we understand that many readers find Senator Cotton's argument painful, even dangerous. We believe that is one reason it requires public scrutiny and debate. And the thing is, it perhaps gets to be for him, maybe, I don't know, or for me, a sort of intellectual thing, the duking out of ideas, but it's not my life on the line. And right, so, well, and that's what changed my mind, too. I agree with you. Yeah. So what, what yeah, I mean, Trump in his uh, speech earlier this week uh, made a reference to the Second Amendment. We know what he's saying. So if if Tom Cotton's op-ed was, uh, you know, uh, good patriotic white Americans need to arm themselves and protect their property, would they run that? And there has right. to be a line somewhere. Um, yeah. And there has to be fact checking by the op-ed board, too, I mean, because there were so many um, so many wrong uh, pr- proposals and and yes. um, uh, pronouncements in, in that op-ed and it should also be pointed out that James Bennett who is the editorial page editor, is the brother of Senator Michael Bennett of Colorado. I think it's, um, you know, so there is a Senate connection there um, as well. Interesting. See, that's what we need from you. And by the way, uh, people are acknowledging that. On Twitch, Meg says, Michael does give perspective I usually don't see, think of. Annoying as it gets, though. (laughs) But he does like having his uh, uh, horizons broadened there. I'm not here to annoy. I've just, uh, I do, I've struggled with it myself, so I'm being honest about it. Um, And if if my conclusion is annoying, I can't help that. But I, I've concluded that they shouldn't have run it. But I, mm-hmm. I see the merits on both sides. Yeah, and I try to, too. Um, what's the point of discussing something like this if you only understand it from one perspective? Yeah. And why have two people do that? That seems fun. <laughs> anyway. Um... <laughs> but, I mean, you know, we're also journalists and we're reporters. And, and, and there is something infringing upon it at its very core to say, you shouldn't publish this, mm-hmm. but it's also just an op-ed, and that's why I think mm-hmm. fact-checking it is a really important thing they need to do yeah. because there was this was a, a, an irresponsible op-ed as well. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know. Maybe I'm. I look at my last op-ed that I submitted to the Hill was rejected. It was uh, laying out all the the dangerous statements from Fox News that I believe increased the likelihood that coronavirus would spread. It was just references to things they'd said on air, um, and they didn't run it. And I'm still incredibly frustrated about that because 
Uh, people, I know that we're not day to day paying a lot of attention to it, but like uh, more than a thousand people died two days ago from coronavirus. About a thousand died yesterday. It is still a very big deal. For more political news, breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.